Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Valamis. I'm on the board of the Analytics and Data Oracle user community. I want to wel welcome you to today's TechCast, where we're joined by Patrick Wheeler. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit uh, in just a little bit. Just wanted to give you all a little background uh, while we start. Uh, Patrick will be talking about Oracle Autonomous Database, Easy Load Transform Model, Auto uh, Data Insights, and more. Patrick is the uh, Vice President of Product Management, uh, and you can find contact information on there as well. Uh, and by the way, uh, we will be making those slides available on our website. Uh, so if you want to uh, be able to refer to this, you can go to our website. We'll talk a little bit about that. Go ahead and advance the next slide, Patrick, if you would. Uh, just so you know, this is in a series of tech casts. We give them about every two weeks uh, on that. And uh, we've been doing this for over a year now. Uh, you can see where we are now, but uh, the latest one was on uh, November 19th. Mark Hornick talked about introducing machine learning for Python. Uh, and we also had uh, something before on pattern dot data model uh, by Shankar and uh, we'll uh, you can see going back uh, on this. The next one, just to uh, give a little plug for Opal, on December 17th, she's going to be talking about You Complete Me, the long-awaited union of Oracle EPM and Analytics Cloud. I'm very interested in uh, hearing what she has to say on that. Uh, all lines are on mute at this point to prevent some background noise on this, just so you know. Uh, and. Uh, we're going to have uh, Patrick talk to us. Uh, and go ahead and uh, next slide, Patrick, if you would. Uh, I also want to make sure that you save the date for our upcoming winter session. Uh, we're going to have three hours on three different days on January 26, 27, and 28. We'll be announcing the uh, specific uh, lineup for that very soon. But uh, we actually encourage any of you to submit an abstract. We'd love to share your story. Uh, and we'll go in, be going through that uh, and uh, just click on the submit an abstract uh, on there. If you go to A and D O U C, uh, we'll have that in our chat window so you can find up find the uh, link for all of our upcoming tech casts. We also make those uh, available on our YouTube channel. You'll find a link to that at uh, A and D O U C dot org as well. And we're encouraging and all of you to submit for that. We'll look at those uh, of those uh, upcoming schedules. Uh, next slide. We also uh, consider ourselves an Oracle community. So uh, you can reach out to us on Slack. There's the link on the Slack. We have a newsletter that you can join. Uh, you can join uh, to us in LinkedIn and uh, on Twitter and on Facebook as well. Uh, we'll have some links at the end that, and as Patrick goes through. Uh, we're going to go through this for about 30 minutes. We'll have some Q&A. Please do put the Q&A in the Q&A widget. Uh, if you're having trouble connecting, you can use the chat window, but otherwise uh, Patrick will monitor the Q&A and answer stuff as it comes out. So with that uh, as a background, let me go ahead and introduce Patrick. Uh, so he has product management responsibilities for Oracle Multi-Tenant, Oracle Data Integrator, ODI, Enterprise Data Quality, S-Base, and a uh, whole portfolio of products that span the uh, data management platform. I'll tell you, I've had a chance to see this presentation in a different venue, and I was thrilled to have the opportunity to be able to welcome Patrick and host this. Uh, I think you'll find this very interesting in new capabilities that are coming to the Oracle database. With that, let me go ahead and turn things over to Patrick and let you take it away. Thank you, Dan, for that very complimentary introduction. Um, and I want to say it's a, it's a real privilege to be able to speak to the analytics and data Oracle user community again. Um, I really appreciate this forum. I was saying to, uh, to Dan in the preparation for this, it's really easy for guys like me. I just show up um, and do a presentation. But there's a huge amount of work that goes into organizing and maintaining this community. So this, 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 this community word that Dan spoke there is a, is a, is a key thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm very privileged to be able to come in and talk to you today about some very important, very interesting uh, enhancements we have to our, to our Oracle Autonomous Database. You may have seen this slide from several of us recently. Uh, Larry Ellison defines our mission this way. Our mission is to help people see data in new ways, discover insights, 
unlock endless possibilities. Data, well, you know, Oracle database is kind of nice to be an Oracle database product manager when you hear that sort of um, mission statement. That's what we do. And the Oracle database is the heart of it all. But there's, there's a problem with the Oracle database. It's too expensive and it's too difficult to manage. But this is where the autonomous database comes in because basically the autonomous database addresses those two problems. It's an extremely inexpensive um, service to get hold of and we do all the management for you. So this leaves the autonomous database the self-driving, self-securing, self-repairing service um, running on the best platform there is to, to run an Oracle database, which is Exadata. We got hundreds of these Exadatas in, in dozens of data centers around the world supporting our autonomous database. So you're running an Oracle database on the best platform you can with all the power of the database, all the economies of scale of multi-tenant, which is what allows us to offer this service at such a competitive price. Um, and this is, uh, this is what we're gonna be talking about today. So the autonomous database has now been available for over a couple of years. Um, it makes the DBA's life very, very simple because of all these self-driving capabilities I've been talking about. But one of the things we talk about a lot in this business is insights. And we had this startling insight, which is that it's not just the DBA that gets to use the database. So it's pretty nice that we do all this automation of the administrative tasks of running a database, but it wouldn't be fair to leave these other players out in the cold. So what are we gonna do about those guys? That was the next question we asked ourselves. And the idea is that we're going to enhance the autonomous database by including into it, in it a built-in tool suite, bits for short, um, that um, will bring these autonomous benefits to all the players in the game. So let's look a little, a little bit at what these requirements might involve. And, and here I like to use a little bit of an analogy. And the analogy I use is a, is a medley. Perhaps we can think about a swimming medley. So think of Michael Phelps and, and the Olympic games here. So you jump in here and, and what is this data analysis medley? Well, the first thing you want to do is load your data. Okay, then comes data preparation. Following that, you're gonna do some semantic modeling. And at last, when you've got the story straight and, and your data structure, you can start doing some analysis and getting some real insight from this data. Okay, that's great. So how do we address this technically? So data analysis in the traditional market, Oracle's answer as usual, is that we bring best of breed enterprise class tools for the specialists, because that's our traditional market, the top end of the market, the most exacting requirements. So data loading, we want something that's robust, proven, scalable, high performance, all the rest of it, Oracle data integrator. Data preparation, you're gonna use something like Oracle enterprise data quality, semantic modeling. You could be doing this in RPD and Oracle analytics, analytic views in the database perhaps. And then you'd be doing your data analysis using a best of breed analytics tools such as Oracle Analytic Cloud. So that is our traditional market. Let's just pause that thought for a while and consider the market that um, the, the Oracle database market. So if we draw a graph, something like this, mapping the size of a company for which perhaps a number of employees is a pretty good proxy against the number of companies of that size it might look something like this. You've got a very few companies that are very, very large, more than 100,000 employees, companies like Oracle, um, and a very large number of companies with fewer employees. And now if we map onto that Oracle's traditional database market, we own the top end of that thing, the most exacting requirements. It's always been what we've aimed for, the most exacting requirements of the most demanding, highest scale, companies in the world, the fortune, thousand, five, five thousand, whatever number you want to choose. But what the autonomous database does, by solving those two problems I mentioned at the beginning, expense and complexity, is to expand our addressable market very dramatically. So now Oracle database is a very realistic proposition 
for the very smallest companies or perhaps small departments within big companies. So now let's compare the customer profile of these, of these two different markets. Whereas our traditional market was perhaps the Fortune 5000 with complex requirements, large budgets to address them with, the budgets of customers in our new market tend to be smaller. So rather than dealing with enterprise IT and large central specialist teams of experts, in our new market, we're dealing with shadow IT and small departmental teams or even individual generalists. So now when we return to this theme of the data analysis medley, perhaps in our traditional market, this is a relay medley as, as the baton is moved from one specialist team to another through these various cycles, through these various stages of the cycle or the medley. But in the new market, um, it's far more likely that this is an individual medley. Um, and that really is pretty challenging, isn't it? Um, is it realistic to expect each of these individuals to be a specialist in each one of these fields? So then we look at the tools that we might offer to people with this new market, this new individual medley. And if we try and address the requirements of this market with our enterprise class tool suite, uh, we could be accused of overkill here. It's overcomplicated. Yes, it's true that all of these tools can be used um, to take an individual through these various cycles, but perhaps it's unreasonable to expect every individualist or, or small departmental team to be capable of using each one of these highly specialized expert level tools. So we think that what's really required um, is a built-in tool suite tailored to the needs and the skill set of these departmental users. We don't think it's realistic to expect people to be expert in all of these individual tools. We don't want to ask them to do an individual medley. It's actually why I like this swimming analogy, right? It's hard enough to swim a lap or two of, of a pool in any stroke, let alone all four strokes. Um, let's rethink how we meet the requirements of this newly accessible market. And what's required is to tailor the tools to specific users. Um, so perhaps expanding on our analogy here, we can think of this more broadly in terms of needing to cross a body of water without necessarily being very good at swimming. Perhaps paddling a canoe is a far more realistic proposition. So this is the kind of um, mindset that we're taking um, in, in, uh, into autonomous database. Um, so now I move on to my next theme, and this is one of the cliches that are, if you've heard me speak before, you'll, I almost always bring this one up. I truly believe uh, that the whole is great in the sum of the parts. And again, we're bringing this philosophy to bear with the autonomous database. Because the point is that the benefits of integration are multifaceted. So rather than dumping a variety of tools on our customers, and expecting them to cobble together a solution. We're delivering an integrated tool set, which is pre-assembled, pre-configured, pre-deployed, nothing to install, there's nothing to buy, it's all right there, um, right in your autonomous database. We want to deliver a consistent user experience, which integrates best practices. It's like having an expert from each of those specialist teams built right into the tool suite. So we deliver a common library of transformations, for example, both within the tenancy and perhaps with an ability to commit to the broader community too. So there are many aspects to integrated data and this is covered more in depth in, 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 other, in other presentations, but um, let's, let's move on a little bit um, within this theme of the whole greater than the sum of the parts. A really key benefit here is that collaboration is built into the tool set by design. So for example, um, uh, th this allows us to eliminate silos. So hierarchies that are recognized automatically in the data integration phase, that is during data load and defined in the database itself, are immediately accessible to the data analyst for aggregation purposes. Additional semantic modeling by the analyst, perhaps defining sophisticated concepts of share of parent, percentage change since last year, these complex concepts such as this. If we define these by the analyst and define it in the database itself, these can be accessed 
by the data scientist. This provides a great head start in developing predictive models that in turn can be used by perhaps the CRM developer who might want to augment a customer view with the most suitable campaign to discuss during the next meeting. So these are the sorts of benefits that we can get uh, with an integrated tool suite. So now let's see why that has become challenging. And we go all the way back here in this little conversation to the enterprise data warehouse. You remember those heady days. The enterprise data warehouse was the zenith of the power of corporate IT. There was a promise of many benefits, global insights derived from a global overview of data. And there was a very high quality threshold for incoming data, basically no garbage in, no garbage out. So you had big teams of data integrators and developers and analysts who could, con could, who could naturally collaborate around this central resource. It's classic, strong data management. It all sounds great, right? But they were cumbersome, they were rigid, and they were very expensive. And we all know what happened next. What happened is the budgets moved to departments and lines of business. And along with the money, so went the power. And this was the dawn of the self-service market. So there followed a proliferation of niche tools to serve this new fragmented market. So there were data integration tools with their metadata stores. There were data prep tools with their metadata stores, development tools with their metadata stores, analytic tools with their metadata stores. And with this fragmentation of tools, comes a fragmentation of data into the technical silos of these various tools in the various departments. And now the enterprise data warehouse is just relegated to one curated source of data among many others. So this great leap in agility has come at the expense of data quality, consistent semantics, reliable data lineage, performance, reliability, all that stuff has suffered. Our opportunity is to address this fragmentation of tools and consolidate these silos of data without sacrificing the gains in flexibility and agility that came with the self-service generation. So what we foresee now is a transition from self-service to autonomous analytics. We can address the problems that the self-service movement introduced. And this is a key point data consolidation and continuous learning from user actions are the essential foundation for autonomous analytics. This will enable us to meet our goals, reconsolidating processing and data, reestablishing strong data management while retaining the hard won benefits of agility and flexibility. Okay. So I've, I've spent the, the first section here talking about the philosophy and why we've, um, why, why we've enhanced autonomous database with this built-in tool suite. Let's dig in now to some of the specifics here. So our strategy again is to deliver a comprehensive platform to allow all types of users to collaborate. We want it to be capable of handling any scale, any type and any location. Yes, our traditional market, the biggest stuff, but also um, some of the least um, demanding requirements, we want that to be just as easy to handle as well. Um, so whether the data is, is uh, in a database, local to the user, or even remote in an object store, we want to be able to support all of this. So we see an evolution, um, and, and you will be seeing as users of Oracle Autonomous Database, an evolution from a unified um, uh, evolution rather to a unified data management platform. So even today, uh, and from the early days of, of, of autonomous database, you will have seen um, under the tools tab of your, of your control plane, um, a few tools there, SQL Developer, Oracle Application Express, Soda Drivers, um, Oracle Machine Learning, User Admin. But what will replace this will be what we see on the right hand side here, a landing page uh, comprising a broad set of data management tools grouped into various themes. And here I'm just showing the themes for development and data tools. 
And now what I'm going to do is walk you through um, various of, of these major, uh, major groupings of tools and think as I go through this of, of the data analysis menu. So uh, medley rather. So we'll be starting with, with data load. And this is the layout of our basic um, data load tool. We want it to be very simple to use, drag and drop. So the actions at the top is very action oriented. The actions at the top, what do you want to do? Do you want to load the data or just link to it? Feeding data is, th think of this as a live table. It, it's a logical place where new data can be added and it just automatically uh, registers in the database. And where is it? It could be in a local file or your database or a cloud store. And once, once you've got hold of it, you might want to explore it. And uh, of course, you need to manage access to that cloud store. And by the way, I should mention, it's not just the Oracle Cloud Store, but we also want to bring in data from, to be able to bring in data from, um, our, for, from, from other cloud storage as well. So I'm gonna show you a little demo here. Uh, and very briefly, let's see if I can pull this off. Um, what I'll do now is click on this data load card and load data from a local file. And as I said, it's a simple matter of drag and drop of a file to this little target. Now let's have a little look at um, the mappings. It's a very simple example of a comma delimited file, nice um, default column mappings, all looks pretty good. A preview here, very basic file in this example. It's a simple date dimension that we're gonna be bringing in here. I think it's time to run it. So I press the go button and we run this, it's a very small file. Um, it happens it, almost instant, instantaneously in this example. So this is it. I wanna have a very simple drag and drop data load experience. Now to look at the table I've just loaded, I press explore. Here's this table I just built. We have this little browser utility. And here under statistics, think of this as a UI on top of the statistics that drive our optimizer. So it's very useful, very nice to be able to repurpose these statistics um, for a quick characterization of our data. So that was a very brief demo of our new data load tool. Okay, I got through the first demo. It's always a good feeling as a presenter to successfully get through your first demo. I've got a couple more to come and um, I, be I better speed up here. I wanna talk a little bit about auto ETL. And the theme here is your data, your way. Um, a lot of people talk about this, uh, the, 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 what I think of as a false dichotomy between collect and connect. I think there's, there's a strong intersection between those things. We want to make it transparent, whether the data is local, physically local to your autonomous database, or it's logically there only, but physically remote somewhere. Uh, we want it to be just as performant and just as easy to access, either directly or through Cloud SQL, we want to access data in files, data from applications. And of course, um, in many cases, the data that you're accessing isn't immediately in the format you want, and that's where transformations come in. So the idea is that we would like to have a very simple uh, capability built in with nothing to install, nothing to buy, to do transformation of data. But we want it to be very capable. So what we've done is we've built this transforms capability on top of Oracle Data Integrator. And if you use Oracle um, Cloud Infrastructure. In our marketplace, you can get a preview of this. It's actually in production, um, ODI with the Web Studio, um, which gives this nice web-based user interface to allow you simply to define some very complex transformations because we're not starting from zero. We're building a new user interface on top of this already very capable, proven, trusted tool, which is Oracle Data Integrator. So this is transformations. But now let's move along in our data analysis menu and get to semantic modeling. And I shouldn't have to convince you too much about the power of this slide. You know, you, you quite often you bring in data and, and the, the, the scheme is pretty arcane. You've got no idea what these things mean. And you look like the person on the left-hand side there, you know, what is this pile of data here? But a semantic model gives us the clarity that the person on the right-hand side of our screen sees, ah, oh, this is a nice, set of data which shows me sales by time, customer, supplier and product. That's the sort of thing a business model lets you do. And we want to be able to help you with automatic discovery um, and proposal of these things because you don't we don't want you to have to be a specialist 
to define these semantic models. But there's a great deal of benefit, of course, to having a rich semantic model, um, expressive calculations, definitions of hierarchies, and all the rest of it. Because if we do have um, a common model, we can overcome this sort of problem. The problem of each individual having their own semantic model is that you possibly get inconsistent results. And of course, there's added time to, to, to develop applications if everybody has to go through the same process. So of course, what's far better is to have a common business model in the database, which promotes consistency. So each user can share the same understanding of data um, and it becomes accessible to every application without code changes. It also allows us to optimize query processing because even if you've connected to remote data, I'll use the insight word again, we have this insight that you will generally want to aggregate data to the top level. Now, if we have the semantic model built into the database, which defines those hierarchies, we can already work on aggregating the data because we know you're gonna to wanna to see those aggregates. So we can aggregate and locally store uh, data that even might at the granular level be in remote places. So we get optimization out of there as well. It's all based on analytic views, which can be automatically created. And I'm so excited about this. I wanna dive straight in to the demo and show you how this works. So um, again, we're going to click on a card, in this case, business models in our landing page. And I'm gonna dive straight in and build a business model which we do by defining what the fact table should be. And in this case, I'm gonna use an example of the COVID-19 data set that I pulled down just at the end of the month. So I'll build a model on this thing here. And now what happens after I press next here is the tool is inspecting the schema um, in the autonomous database, looking for potential dimensions, joins, hierarchies, and various measures and it's come up with a sample model, which actually is pretty good. Um, with this COVID data set, we're joining on, on this date key to a date dimension and the geography key with the FIPS um, county code uh, to a geography dimension. Okay, very good. Let's just build it. Um, so we'll build this data model. And what's happening technically is we're implementing this as an analytic view. And when we've completed the job, you see this card here uh, at the bottom left of the screen, which represents the business model that I've just built. If I dive into it, um, I want to refine it a little bit because I got rather impatient. Um, there are actually three candidates for the geography dimension, and I, I only want to use the one from the geography dimension table itself rather than the ones that came from within the fact table. I'm going to overwrite the um, captions to use here. That's enough work on the geography dimension. And now in the date dimension, I don't like this caption year. I'm going to overwrite that and just say date in general. And the sorting by month, I want this to be the month number rather than the alphabetical name of the month. Measures wise, um, I think the appropriate computation here is sum, but we've got access to the other popular aggregates as well. Um, and that's good enough for now. So now we've built a nice um, business model in the database that everyone can use. This is what I didn't have to do. Take a look at all this DDL. Now I've got a guy in my team that can write that sort of DDL, but I certainly can't. And it's very nice to have a tool that can do it for me. Okay, so that was a quick view of this business modeling capability. Now let's move on um, and talk about insights. I've mentioned this word several times, but um, you know we call this thing also insights. I don't get to name products around here, but if I had the chance, I'd have named it the electromagnet because I think of this job as a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. You've got all this data but give me something useful out of it. That's the needle you want to pull out of the haystack. So you hover the electromagnet over the haystack and you crank on the power and all the bits of metal come flying up and stick to the electromagnet. And you're going to get bolts and screws and rusty old nails and stuff like that and hair clips and whatever, but you might get a few needles too. And that's the idea here. The idea of auto insights is you're going to load this data and then you're going to go off and you're going to have your breakfast. You might have a nice cup of tea like this. Ah, yeah. 
And the database is doing all this work, crawling over the business model, running in the background and looking for hidden patterns and outliers, running a variety of analytic um, algorithms. Single value decomposition is, is a classic one. And here's a screenshot of this thing. But let, let me dive in. I want to show you another demo of this thing. So again, I'm going to hit the uh, electromagnet card, I mean the insights card here, and retrieve an insight that I did run in advance of this presentation. Um, and th this took several minutes to run, which is why I'm not doing it live in the demo, but I'm just retrieving results. But what we see here across this COVID data set is various different looks of the data. And here, for example, is the data for Florida. And what we see at the top here in the legend, um, the blue is the actuals and the green is the forecast. So where the forecast is dramatically different from the actual, we outline that um, outlier in black as we're showing here. And that is the basis perhaps for further investigation. So this is our insight tool, our electromagnet tool. But wait, there's more. Um, and, and this was the is and more part of the, um, of the title of this presentation. So the whole point is that um, we, we've got a great deal of value here that each individual does. And of course, this is where the benefit of collaboration comes in. And because we've got this built-in metadata repository, which is consistent for all of the tools that uh, I've just given you a very brief demo of, um, and indeed, we, 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 can in, in, we can integrate this with the OCI data catalog, which is perhaps that you can think of this as a more logical level of catalog. The one that we've got built into the uh, autonomous database is, is far more physical. Um, this gives us a great UI for data lineage and impact analysis, which is visible to all users um, and will provide a UI on top of it. But there are also APIs in SQL and PL SQL to get access to this. This indeed is how uh, we'll integrate with our friends in the OCI data catalog team. But I want to show you now the autonomous built-in tool suite, or BITS as I call it, um, data catalog. So another little demo here. Um, we'll click this time on the catalog card. Um, and we see by default tables in our autonomous database. I've got this little browser interface. So if I type COVID or geog, I reduce the list to just these few. And if I expand the entity types that I'm showing uh, and add business models to tables, I get all of the matching entities. If I look at just one of them, the geog dimension, here's this familiar browser interface to, to show the data in there. It's a very simple table. Here's the data definition. Um, again, statistics. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that there's consistency of UI throughout these various components. But showing you something you haven't seen previously, let's have a look at the impact analysis of just a very simple table, um, which is used in, in this business model uh, that, that we've been looking at. And even something as simple as this, I'm sorry, this is such an eye chart, um, but here we see the impact um, uh, uh, analysis of, of this geography dimension with just its few columns. It's used here in an attribute hierarchy, which is the basis for um, an analytic view. The analytic view in turn is used by a business model, um, which is the basis for these insights. Um, and I just showed you one of them just now for the state of Florida. So isn't it interesting that even a relatively quick demo like this has quite a rich set of metadata associated with it. Um, and that's the impact analysis side. The lineage is, is um, flipping that on its head, I guess. So where did this geography dimension come from? Here are its columns. It was imported in a data load job from this CSV file using the data load tool that I showed you previously. And here again is the preview widget of, um, that, that we've seen in many different components. Okay, so that was a very brief skip through um, our catalog tool. Okay, very good. So the autonomous database with a built-in tool suite or autonomous bits, as I call it. And here I'd ask you a question. Can you imagine buying a car these days that doesn't have Bluetooth or sat nav or 
cup holders even you remember the generation of cars that came along with, with with cup holders but this was actually the sort of car literally my family had a car like this when i was a boy we didn't even have seat belts back then the point is that generations evolve and and as these generations evolve um, we raise the standard of the minimum level of acceptable functionality and likewise with databases you know, back in back in the 70s and early 80s when i was getting kicked off in this business the basic name of the game with relational databases is, is they needed to be able to support the um, some of the basic things of, of cards laws ddl dml that was about it then we had transactions and procedures because databases were starting to be used for serious things and after that you need the performance scalability reliability and security businesses are running on these things then we've got converged databases Polyglot, consist, uh, polyglot persistence, exadata, these um, engineered system. And then in the next generation, autonomous generation, we require, we believe, a built-in tool suite so that all users have the benefits of autonomy built in with nothing to buy and nothing to install. So the autonomous database with this built-in tool suite boasts the following key capabilities, easy data import, auto, ETL, auto business modeling, auto insights, metadata and governance, governance. It's the next generation database cloud service from the industry's leader for data management. And, that, and that's Oracle, of course. So um, here I provide some links to some reference material that you might find interesting. Um, Oracle.com autonomous database will get you to um, all sorts of interesting information about our autonomous database. And some of the best of it is available for free. Um, so oracle.com slash cloud for free. Um, Live Labs lets you play with an awful lot of our technology and we've got more and more autonomous stuff coming here. Live SQL lets you mess around with SQL and experiment with all sorts of very interesting capabilities. And of course, Oracle Database and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure are accessible um, through the web as well. So Dan, at this point, I'm gonna hand back to you, but thank you everybody uh, for, for your attention. And thanks again to, um, to Dan and um, the analytics and data Oracle user community for this opportunity to speak to you all. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Uh, say, uh, if you have a few minutes, I'd like to uh, see if any of our attendees have some questions they'd like to share. You can uh, put it in the Q&A uh, chat line, uh, I'm sorry, Q&A widget and uh, Patrick can see those. Uh, while we're waiting for some of those to come in, Patrick, I have to ask the pregnant question that uh, everybody is always asking. Uh, availability of this, is this a, a vision thing? Is this coming out soon? Is it available? What, what, what's the line on uh, this availability? This, this stuff is rolling out literally as we speak um, and it's moving at cloud pace. So cloud pace, is, uh, I, I guess there are two dimensions to the way this, this rolls out. We, um, we're, we're, we're always enhancing it very frequently, uh, the functionality that's available. And the first wave of functionality has been rolled out to an autonomous database near you as we speak. So in the next few days or weeks, um, you will see when you look under your autonomous database, uh, look in the control plane, um, it, click on tools. And as these tools become available under there, you'll find access to the database actions menu. Um, from SQL Developer, uh, from SQL Developer Web. So the, the first of these features that are, are becoming available now. Uh, you'll find, I believe, the data load capability, insights, and catalog now, um, with some of the others coming very soon. Business modeling, enhanced versions of data load, um, and all sorts of good stuff is coming. I knew you were going to ask, Dan. I'm glad to be able to say it's coming now. OK. And uh, just to clarify, we've got uh, people from different areas, uh, people that are running on-prem, people that are uh, running on the cloud. Uh, do we expect that this is in the Oracle database or is this specifically in the autonomous uh, database series? Very important question. Yeah, th these, these capabilities are built in specifically to the Oracle autonomous database. Um, where is the autonomous database? Well, it's, it's in the cloud. But where is that cloud? Um, it, it's in the public cloud. But if you like, uh, the autonomous database is also available cloud at customer. 
um, and with dedicated regions as well. We have a whole range of um, means of consuming our cloud. Um, so yes, it's all cloud service stuff, but that cloud can be wherever you need it. Okay, great. Um, well, hopefully I've given people a chance to uh, put in some of the stuff in the Q&A if there's any uh, that you want to address there. Let's see. Uh, yes, there are a couple here. Um, okay, so Giovanni, um, when do we plan to release the AutoML? Oh, we've got some very good stuff to talk about with AutoML. Um, I don't want to steal Charlie and Mark's thunder, but I think one of the um, one of the slides you mentioned at the very beginning, Dan, uh, Mark is going to be doing a presentation, I believe, on um, quite shortly on these topics. So very soon, if I bring that slide up, um, Mark is going to be talking about OML for Pi um, in a couple of weeks. So um, we'll be able to talk about that at that time. And Tim Blamis, any limits on the size of data sources um, that the data bits? Um, no, that's a very good question, Tim. No limits. Um, we want this to be very easy. Now, obviously, we're dealing with laws of physics. The demo I gave, um, I'm not going to make any, any bones about it. I was bringing a very small table. I, I doubt there were more than 1,000 rows, and it took less than a second or so, which you'd expect. But that's no real challenge. When uh, my, my tests, I found the loading from home and, and on VPN and, and my home network, I've been doing, you know, the half a minute for, for a quarter of a million rows, that sort of thing in a spreadsheet. But you end up bumping into the limits of what you can, you can feasibly wait to do. I think for higher volumes, it's much more realistic to be loading things from the object store. Um, and there we get, we're getting fantastic performance. And there's no, there's no practical limit to, to um, how much uh, to, to how big these things can be. Basically, if it can be stored in an Oracle database, it can be loaded via these tools and, um, and it'll be loaded very efficiently. But Patrick, what, what should we expect? Um, you know, the scale question is always there for these tools that are, quote, easy to use. Uh, is it using the same underlying capabilities or is this a stripped down version? What's the difference between using something like Oracle Data Integrator? Will I have a full power of that tool available versus using this bits package? Um, is it just ease of use or is it power that's there or is it the scalability or what? It, it's, so it's ease of use is, is the major difference here. Um, what we've done, what we've tried to do, and it's very difficult to get this absolutely right, but what we've tried to do is say, we're gonna give you everything you need and nothing you don't. Um, and then that becomes rather an arbitrary line who gets to decide what we can and can't, uh, you know, what you do and don't need. But we're, we're providing what we believe is the most um, immediately required transforms through this web UI, uh, which is based on, on ODI, as I say. But if you reach the limits of what you can do with this web UI, you can simply move over to the, um, to the traditional ODI studio Perhaps, you know, we're talking now about asking um, a, a data integration specialist um, to, to enhance the capability, to, to enhance a set of mappings. And it's the very same ODI studio um, that, that, will, that will be able to, um, to, to, to continue work there. So there's no real limit in terms of complexity. And in terms of, uh, of volumes, there are two ends of this one. Uh, you want to be able to handle the very simplest uh, workloads very, very simply. And we can do that. And, th and this, this was the point I was trying to make at the beginning about, about accessibility. But there's no limit at the other end either. So whereas you can consume autonomous database at the scale of um, you know, one terabyte of storage and one OCPU, you can go all the way up to hundreds of OCPUs and, and huge storage volumes. So um, we believe that we've got a service which addresses the full spectrum uh, of, um, of, of scale very, very well. Super. Well, thank you. Um, I don't see other questions coming in. Uh, Patrick, if you can uh, just put up your um, information at the very beginning, you can find our future TechCasts on here and uh, reach out to Patrick. Uh, and uh, it's exciting opportunities. We look forward to using some of these, uh, I'll tell you, in some of our client projects. Uh, this is great. Thanks so much for joining us, Patrick. This concludes the webinar. You can find the uh, replay of this on our website. 
uh, andouc.org. And thank you so much, Patrick. Thank you, Dan, and thanks everyone for joining. Have a good day. Bye.